Welcome everybody to another episode of Finns Nation. I am your host, Lewis Sung, and today we're going to be talking about the Miami Dolphins and the NFL trade deadline. And the fact that we're even talking about this, it's only because the Dolphins for once did not seem they were compelled to do anything. And that is actually very refreshing. I'm going to talk about why that is, and I'm going to go ahead and talk about why I feel like this was honestly probably the best move the Dolphins could have done. But before that, really quick, just want to go ahead and mention that, as always, this show is brought to you by our good friends over at PrizePicks.com. PrizePicks.com is the revolutionary fantasy platform where you can now pick up to six different players across professional sports leagues, whether that's the NFL, the NBA, the MLB, one of each. It's up to you to decide. Just choose whether your chosen player will get more or less than their projected stat. They give you free squares, special Taco Tuesday promos, and upgraded Flex Friday specials where you can pick up to six different players and possibly win up to $500 on a protected $20 play, or maybe they'll even give you more money for your win if you happen to get that week. So that's all you have to do. Just go to prizepicks.com, use the promo code 5, that's F-I-V-E, and they will match up to $100 on your initial deposit when you initially sign up. It's that simple, so go ahead and do it. You have no excuse use not to at this point use prizepicks.com promo code 5 get started winning today this show is now also affiliate sponsored by my nintendo store let's face it folks we're all gamers at heart and nintendo's been there for us for nearly 50 years creating all-time classics that are remembered by every generation growing up either now or in the past and right now they have special deals going on for what are sure to be more top selling games in nintendo's endlessly long lineup super mario rpg a classic from the days of the nintendo 64 is being completely remastered from the ground up and will be releasing on november 17th for new audiences to enjoy Mario's first ever RPG adventure. And out right now is Super Mario Wonder, the Mario Brothers' latest completely new game that is already receiving rave reviews from both critics and actual gamers alike. Just click the links in the description below to order or pre-order either of these awesome titles and you'll be receiving bonus items upon making your purchase. My Nintendo Store, your best and quickest gateway to the world of Nintendo. All right, folks, so let's go ahead and just get into this trade deadline stuff real quick. So you know how it goes. Every single year, Miami Dolphins fans everywhere start discussing, hey, I wonder if we could potentially get this player from this team. And I am sure that there were some people out there who were saying, we'll give you Sa- we'll give you a fifth round pick for Saquon Barkley or some nonsense like that. Because there are a lot of teams out there that were looking at these players who are very disgruntled. They want to move on. They want to go to a contender or they're just not being... Uh, Uh, They're not living up to the expectations of their contract. Now, in my world, in my perfect, wonderful world, right? This is my fantasy world, if you will. Emmanuel Ogba would have been traded by the Dolphins for maybe something like a third or a fourth round pick in exchange for us keeping some of his salary on our books. And then we would have been able to get like some uh, mid-round pick for him or something like that. That would have been my perfect world. But... Ultimately, I feel like the best thing the Dolphins could have done, and it is ultimately what they did do, they stood pat. They went ahead and said, no, we are not interested in moving anybody. We're not interested in acquiring anybody. We're not interested in changing the status quo one bit. And let's be real about something here. The way that it is right now out there in the NFL, there are some players who you could make the argument would be an upgrade over what they have now. I know that there are certain players, uh, one who comes to mind immediately from the Bears, a lot of people were talking about him, Jalen Johnson, a cornerback for the Bears. He was somebody who basically made it known that he is not happy in Chicago, he does not want to be in Chicago, and yet the Chicago Bears ultimately opted to keep him. So I guess what happened was that there were no teams willing to pick him up. I know that there were some Dolphins fans who were looking at this guy, Jalen Johnson, and saying, you know what, he would be a fantastic addition, and if anything happened to Jalen Ramsey again, or if something happened to Xavier Howard, or if something happened to Nick Needham, or Cater Kohu, or whoever, he's in the final year of his rookie contract contract. He's been a fantastic player for the Chicago Bears. He would have been a great addition and maybe he could have been had for, I don't know, a fourth or fifth round pick. I'm just throwing numbers out there because I don't know ultimately what it is the Bears were looking for. 
But ultimately, they decided to keep him, and okay, fine, so be it. There were a lot of other moves that were made throughout the NFL. Razul Douglas went to the Buffalo Bills, so he went from the Packers. He's a a cornerback as well. Donovan Peoples-Jones going from the Cleveland Browns to the Detroit Lions. I have already put in a waiver claim for Donovan Peoples-Jones now that he actually has a good offense to play in. Uh, Chase Young went to the San Francisco 49ers. That's going to be a boon to their defense. Um, Ezra Cleveland went to the Jaguars. He's a guard out of Minnesota. Depending on who you ask, he's either really good or really bad. Joshua Dobbs, the quarterback from Arizona, went to the Minnesota Vikings, so he's going to take over for Kirk Cousins. His Achilles has basically knocked him out for the rest of the year, so now the Vikings are going to try to make do with uh, Josh Dobbs. Montez Sweat, the other pass rusher for the Washington Commanders, just went to the Chicago Bears, so the, basically the, uh, the the fire sale in Washington is making it so that Ron Rivera is basically just going to be waiting to be handed his firing uh, his firing papers so he won't be a coach for the commanders next year i'm willing to bet uh leonard williams uh defensive tackle see going to the seattle seahawks and kevin byard going to the philadelphia eagles so a lot of these contending teams the eagles the bills the lions the 49ers they all made moves to go ahead and try to upgrade their room but why didn't the miami dolphins You would think that with all these rumors, with all these talks about Dolphins want a linebacker, Dolphins want a running back, Dolphins want pretty much everything. Dolphins want offensive linemen. The Dolphins want everything. Why didn't they make even a single move? And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to explain why. Mike McDaniel said it straight up in a press conference. And I'm going to go ahead and just read you guys the quote here. On October 25th, before the game against the New England Patriots even happened, Mike McDaniel said this, and I quote, I think to the credit of, first and foremost, the actual players that we have on the roster, and then to our personnel department led by Chris Greer, I'm very, very comfortable with everybody on the roster. So we were talking about this back in August, about how much depth we have, and we've continued to progress as a football team, so we're fortunate that we have high-quality players across the board in terms of depth at positions. So I'm not really looking for anything at all. And who knows what Chris Greer is doing, but he hasn't come knocking on my door or in my office about anything. He'll always be doing his job, but I'm very happy with the roster that we have, even with the slight adversity that we've been facing. Obviously, that slight adversity that he's referring to is the loss to the Philadelphia Eagles. Again, this quote happened before they had even faced the New England Patriots this past Sunday. So, obviously, they jumped back into it. They got back in gear. This is all a big deal for the Miami Dolphins because it just shows the level of confidence that Mike McDaniel has in his current group to be able to get the job done and potentially win a Super Bowl. As a reminder for everybody... In case you haven't noticed, or in case you've been living under a rock somewhere, the Miami Dolphins are currently at 6-2. and two. They have only lost two games all year, and we're already at midseason. They are first place in many offensive categories, even ahead of the Patrick Mahomes-led Kansas City Chiefs. So there is not really a whole lot you could add to this team to make it that much better. Like maybe you could make the argument that you could go and trade for a guard because you don't have a whole lot of faith in Lester Cotton. Okay, I kind of get that. Uh, Maybe you don't have a whole lot of faith in Liam Eikenberg. Okay, I get that from a fan perspective. But if you look at this coaching staff and you look at the job that they have done with the players that they have, Lester Cotton has not been bad, okay? And neither has Eichenberg, even as a backup center. Liam Eichenberg has been bizarrely better than I was expecting over the past couple of weeks. And that's saying a lot because as much as I despise the idea of Liam Eichenberg being our main backup at any position, being the backup center, Eichenberg has been serviceable. He's been decent. And that's pretty much what you ask for when you have a backup offensive anything. If you have a guard, a left tackle, a center, whatever. You just want them to be decent. You're not looking for Pro Bowl caliber play. The Dolphins already got lucky with Kendall Lamb on that one. But when you're looking at this team right now, at least on offense, there's not really much you can do to make it better. Now, there were other players that the Dolphins could have potentially looked at. 
One name that immediately comes to mind, and it was floated around Twitter a lot by a lot of Dolphins fans out there, Josie Jewell of the Denver Broncos. Ironically enough, the same Denver Broncos that gave up 70 points to the Miami Dolphins a few weeks ago, that doesn't mean that there's no good pieces on that team. Josie Jewell has been a fantastic player for them. He's been very solid. He would be excellent depth for the linebacker core, and everybody knows that the Miami Dolphins linebacker core, of all the spots on the defense, linebacker is probably the weakest, I want to say. Javon Holland is going to be back. Deshaun Elliott is doing a fantastic job so far. So unless you're talking safety, linebacker is probably the weakest spot the Dolphins have because if anything happens to David Long Jr., which we've had two scares two weeks in a row now, and we also have anything to do with Jerome Baker, who's trying his best to be everywhere on the field at once. I give the guy credit. He works really hard at what he does. And I will also say this. He has played a lot better, both him and David Long together. They've been both playing a lot better than they have been in the past few weeks. So maybe that is an effect of Jalen Ramsey returning. Maybe that is an effect of them understanding Vic Fangio's scheme more as time goes on. Maybe that's the byproduct of the entire defense coming together as a whole. Maybe it's not just one player. Maybe it's the entire thing finally coming together and getting all the pieces that you need to make it work. Vic Fangio didn't seem like he was interested in getting a whole lot of trades e done either. So you would think somebody who's been looking for the right personnel to make his defense work, you would think he would be all over the potential trade deadline. But no, nobody said anything. Nobody seems even remotely concerned. And here's the other thing, the other factor that we haven't even discussed yet. Even without making a single trade, the Miami Dolphins have so many reinforcements coming in the tail end of this season that it's honestly kind of scary. I'm just going to go ahead and read you a tweet that was sent out by the official five recent sports account. And it piggybacks off of Chris Coffin of the three yards per carry who pointed this out. So I'm just going to go ahead and give you this list here. At the trade deadline, technically speaking, again, the Miami Dolphins are adding an all pro left tackle. Pro football focuses seventh best center from 2022, a pro bowl cornerback, Pro Football Focus's number one safety, the ninth best offensive guard in football, and the best running back in the NFL before he was injured. That's the list of kind of that's the list of reinforcements that the Miami Dolphins are getting back at the trade deadline as they get ready to go and face the Kansas City Chiefs. So I just want to give you guys the names. I think you all know who this is, but I'll just give you the list anyway. Teron Armstead, Connor Williams, Xavier Howard. Javon Holland, Robert Hunt, and Devon Achon. All of those guys coming back to, they're going to be coming back soon. And these are all reinforcements that the Dolphins are getting, and they're going to be able to bring back to the roster. Now, that's probably going to be the last of the roster because there's probably no more space to bring people back from IR. So it is what it is. But these guys are so important to the team, and they are not players that the Dolphins have been able to utilize to their fullest all the way up until now. And now as they get ready to face the Chiefs, these guys are going to be coming back. That is more reinforcements than any other team in the NFL is getting back right now. Like you can say that, oh, the Vikings are probably hoping with all their heart and soul that something happens with Justin Jefferson and they'll get him back. I'm sure that they're wanting that to be the case. He wants to come back sooner rather than later. That's great. That's wonderful. But that's one guy. It would be the equivalent of... It's not the equivalent of what the Dolphins are getting back. Our starting left tackle, our starting center, our starting right guard, our starting cornerback, our starting safety, and potentially a starting running back, depending on how much he and Raheem Mostert end up splitting snaps. Because right now, even with Jeff Wilson and Savan Ahmed, who are also playing decently well, the run game has not been that great as of late. But that's because of the lack of starters on the offensive line. They're doing all right in pass protection. Lester Cotton, Robert Jones against the Patriots, Liam Eikenberg, and even Kendall Lamb. Yeah, that's great. They're doing a decent job pass protecting. The run game has suffered because it takes a little bit. It's a different technique, a different set of skills that you need to be able to run block effectively. Those are all things that all these other guys do effectively. Teron Armstead coming back is crucial. Connor Williams coming back at center, crucial. Robert, jo uh, Robert Hunt coming back is crucial. And as for the Isaiah Wynn situation, 
We will see what happens with Lester Cotton. We'll see if uh, Butch Berry can pull off another miracle because if he can turn Austin Jackson into a starting caliber right tackle and he can turn Kendall Lamb into a potential Pro Bowl caliber left tackle because if we're being honest with ourselves, Kendall Lamb has done a lot better than any backup offensive lineman has any right to be. There are a lot of teams, and I've said this on several shows already, there are a lot of teams out there who probably wished that the Dolphins might have been willing to part with Kendall Lamb, or they still are overlooking the whole thing and saying that they don't realize what Kendall Lamb can potentially be for them. Kendall Lamb has been better than we even imagined he could be, and we already suspected that he could be pretty good just based on that New England game last season where he played just a few snaps and then ended up getting injured. But those few snaps were all the Dolphins needed to be convinced, oh, hold on, we got something special with this guy. He's going to be our new swing tackle. And just knowing that and then seeing what Butch Berry has done with the guys that are already here, Lester Cotton and Robert Jones and Liam Eikenberg. Liam Eikenberg was not supposed to be good at all. The fact that he's even serviceable as a backup center, which he has never played, that is something that is a miracle in and of itself. We as Miami Dolphins fans should be very excited for what we're seeing here. And the fact that the Dolphins decided that they have no interest in trading anybody away, no interest in trading for anybody no interest whatsoever in getting any new acquisitions that would require them to give up an asset of any kind. Nobody out there was worthy in their eyes of bringing on to the team in exchange for something else. Does this mean the Dolphins might not look at free agency at all? We'll see. But I still am convinced that as somewhere down the line, they may decide to bring in another defensive tackle. Maybe they'll bring in another safety somewhere just to help on special teams. I don't think they're going to bring in another punter. I think that Jake Bailey is here to stay, at least for the foreseeable future. Hopefully, after next season, we might bring in Michael Turk or somebody else again to compete with him because I don't think Jake Bailey is a particularly good punter. I'm so sorry. There's probably a reason the Patriots dumped you. So... We will see what happens. I am very excited. The Dolphins have more reinforcements coming at the trade deadline than any player that they could have potentially actually traded for. So if there was ever a time to beat the Kansas City Chiefs, and if you listened to me on Pulse of Fins Nation last night, you know that I actually picked the, the Chiefs to win, unfortunately. My other two co-hosts, Ron Caniff, Chris Early, which, by the way, you can now listen to that on the Three Yards Per Carry feed. If you are, if you are listening to their podcast, we are now officially on their feed. You should go check that out. I, I picked the Chiefs to win simply because I just – it's it's a lot for me to say Miami can beat Kansas City. I, I know that they can. They are physically capable of doing it. But believing that they actually will beat them, I'm not quite there yet because this is Kansas City. There's this mystique around them. And Patrick Mahomes is a freak of nature unlike any have ever seen before. If the Dolphins do win against Kansas City – I will be so happy. I will be so utterly thrilled that the Dolphins will have beaten the reigning Super Bowl champs, not just because of what it means for the team going forward, but because I'll finally have to, I won't have to hear any more about how, oh, the Dolphins haven't beaten anybody special. You can't get more special than Kansas City. So that's going to be it for this show. Thank you all so much for listening. I appreciate you sticking with me all this time. This upcoming Friday, we're going to have a Behind Enemy Lines with a Kansas City Chiefs representative. It's going to be good to get things from their point of view. If you have not already done so, make sure you go to pricepicks.com. Use the promo code 5, that's F-I-V-E, and they will match up to $100 on your initial deposit when you sign up. It's that easy. You basically got no excuse at this point if you're any kind of a fantasy sports fan because they are the best place to go for your daily fantasy needs. Promo code 5, F-I-V-E put up to $100 in your money and they will give you 100 of their dollars for you to play with first. And of course, if you are in a big time Nintendo fan, we are affiliate sponsored by My Nintendo Store. Super Mario RPG will be releasing on November 17th and there is a link in the description for Pulse of Finn's Nation and you can go ahead and check that out. It is also going to be in the description of this show as well. And Super Mario Wonder is also going to be is also out right now, so make sure you click on the link below and go ahead and get your order and you will get bonus items for doing so. We will see you all Friday for another episode of Finn's Nation.